Okay. I had another question about this problem here. This is question 5.5. Um, I'm not sure which number it was on the homework, but it's, it's, it's this word problem towards the end. Um, and the question was just how to solve this problem all together. Now the problem has several parts. Um, so I'm gonna step through how to solve each part first. Uh, starting with just the first part, A. It says to find the length of the shadow at 8 a.m., at noon, and 5.45 p.m. Uh, well, this, this problem gives us a nice little function here, which tells us how to find the length of shadow. So this, this tells us a six-foot man casts a shadow of this length. Um, and it tells us S is measured in feet. That's the length of his shadow in feet and t is the number of hours since 6 a.m. So let's just real quick make a, a table of values for t. So this would be the time. And this would be the actual value of t. Um, so at 8 a.m., what should t be? Well, that's, that's two hours later, so t equals two. At noon, that's 12 p.m., I believe, I think. That is six hours after 6 a.m. at 2 p.m. Uh, we've got uh, another two hours after that, so that's eight hours after 6 a.m. And at 5.45 p.m., that's almost 12 hours later. It's just 15 minutes shy. So that's 11 hours and 45 minutes. Well, that's three-fourths of an hour. So here's our... <clears throat> forgive my spacings, but this is our table of times and hours since 6 a.m. So these are the T's that we're going to plug in here. Okay, so we've got S of T now. We'll sort of write these out. So we take 6 times the absolute value of the cotangent of pi over 12 times t, whatever it is. So we can plug in two here to start it off and close the absolute value. And this, I would just evaluate with a calculator. Um, you could do this by hand. This is a well-known angle. And you can remember that cotangent is cosine of the angle over sine of the angle, okay? Um, and we know the cosine, I hope, of pi over six. And I hope we know the sine of pi over six. But I think for the purposes of this problem, you can round everything to two decimal places, as they say. So you could evaluate this with a calculator or you could simply remember that this is uh, square root of three. Okay, um, that's because the cosine of pi over six is root three over two and the sine of pi over six is one half. So we've got square root of three over two divided by one over two, which is root three. So we get six times the absolute value of root three for this first part. Okay, for the next part, all we're gonna do is replace this two with six. And we're gonna repeat the whole process just to, to calculate out the length of the shadow. So we're gonna get six times the absolute value of the cotangent of pi over 12 times six. Close that absolute value off. Okay, so this is the cotangent of pi over two. That's how the six and the 12 cancel. So you could plug this into a calculator or you could use this definition of the cotangent down here. Cotangent of x equals cosine over sine. So we get cosine of pi over two, which we all know, and divided by the sine of pi over two, which we should all know, I hope. 
uh, cosine of pi over two. Well, this is an angle where the terminal side, the terminal point is straight over the origin. It's up at the top of the unit circle. So this <clears throat> cosine of pi over two is zero and the sine is one. So it doesn't matter that we multiply this by six in the end, this is just zero, okay? So when the sun is directly overhead, you have no shadow. That's what this is saying. Um, now we could continue to do this for the other two times, but I, I think the process is rather straightforward. Um, the only thing that's gonna be different in the next ones is that the cotangent is gonna be negative in the parts, uh, in parts three and four here. So you can have a negative cotangent value. Um, that's why this absolute value is here. It's saying to just drop the negative signs that you get from the cotangent. Um, the negative sign here could, could be interpreted this way. Um, okay, so when the sun is on the picture here, when the sun is on the right, it casts a shadow this way right? So we'll, the cosine turns into a, or excuse me, the cotangent is positive, okay? But when the sun is on the left, you can imagine that the sun is over here now. The shadow points in the other direction, doesn't it? It points this way, okay? So this gives us that the cotangent is less than zero, it's negative. Well, that negative sign, it's just representing the direction. We'll say to the left is positive, and to the right is negative. This, this seems all weird, but that's the way that the picture is drawn, so that's what we've got. Okay, that's just an interpretation. Okay, the next part of this problem, um, asks for a graph. Um, if you're having troubles with that one, I would just suggest that you plot a couple points using this definition uh, that we utilized here. Um, plot a couple points like you like what we've got here. Um, and you'll, you'll, you'll quickly come up with the graph uh, that you need. Um, from part C, it asks, determine the values of t at which the length of the shadow equals the man's height. To what time of day does each of these values correspond? Oh, excuse me. So what we've got here is we, we want to make sure that S of some time, and we don't know that time, is equal to his height. So that's equal to six feet. Okay. Now we know that this is calculated this way. We take six times the absolute value of the cotangent of this pi over 12 times t, the hours since 6 a.m. So we want six to equal six times a number. Well, that number could be one, right? <laughs> six times one is definitely six. So there's an option. But remember that we're also taking the absolute value of this, this cotangent number. So maybe the cotangent value is one and you take the absolute value and you get one again, but maybe the cotangent value of that stuff is actually negative one. So that when you take the absolute value, it becomes one again. So let's look for both of those angles. Let's, let's set this up into two parts. Part one, cotangent of pi over 12 times some t is equal to positive one. And two, cotangent of pi over 12 times t is negative one. And we'll think about this, right? At what angle is the ratio of cosine to sine equal to one or negative one? 
at what angle is cosine equal to sine? Well, I guarantee if I draw a picture here of this, you'll think of it right away. Cosine refers to the x coordinate and the y coordinate. Excuse me, the x coordinate. The sine refers to the y coordinate. Cotangent uses the ratio of the two. So we could just think about this in terms of where is the x coordinate equal to the y coordinate here? Well, you go over an amount x, and then you go up an amount x, and you get to this, this point that's equal parts over and up. That's definitely pi over four, right? That's one quarter of the way around half the circle. So it's pi over four is our angle. Okay, now this one, number two, where is this ratio equal to negative one? Well, the one tells us that they still, the cosine and the sine still have the same value but the negative sign tells us they're opposite, which means one of them is positive and one of them is negative. So a nice place to put that is right here. Right, you go, ne you go backwards negative and a negative amount x, and then you go up an equal part, which is positive. And that corresponds to three-fourths of the way around half the circle, right? So one, two, three. So that's three pi over four. So here's two angles that work for that. Uh, we just need to then do a little bit of arithmetic here. So we've got t is equal to, excuse me, pi over 12 times t is equal to pi over four. So we just need to solve for this, right? So we multiply both sides by 12 to give us pi t equals three pi, and then we divide by the pi, so t is equal to three. Uh, in this next one, we do the same thing, except we, we add a three in front of this pi over four. We multiply both sides by 12 to get nine pi equals pi t. We divide by pi to get t equals nine okay and then the last part of this problem just says explain what happens to the shadow as the time approaches 6 p.m so that is as t goes to 12 from the from the left side so so that means from below it's rising up to 12. so let's think about uh let's think about this when uh Let's think about this from a perspective of the physical thing that's happening here. Well, at t equals zero, what is our, uh, where is the sun? Sun is right here at the horizon, right? The angle is zero degrees. So how long is the shadow? Well, it's very, very, very long, <laughs> right? In fact, just as the sun rises, the shadow is being cast by the sun at a very, very steep or very, very shallow angle. So the shadow is very, very long. In fact, it's probably infinitely long. It's pointing up, right? So let's change to the end perspective here. When the angle gets all the way around here to the sun setting, at 6 p.m. What happens to a shadow? Well, the same thing, right? The sun at this time is casting a shadow here. At the next time, the shadow is being cast out here. <sighs> and as the sun gets closer and closer to setting, the shadow gets longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. Don't even need to think about the, the model, really. You can just think about the physical thing that's happening. Okay, I hope that helps.